back to Recovery Strategies for Life. We are so glad that you're back and you have completed Unit 1. Woo! <laughs> that is such a great success. And today we're going to start Unit 2 off with Week 12 talking about the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Mm. That is so amazing. We get to fill up instead of yes. focusing on the past and the hurts and the damage and all of the things that we've been working through about working forward because we're looking backwards. Now we actually right. get to do something that's for us yes. to fill up, to change, to do. That is so exciting. And even as a counselor, we do a lot of digging in the past. This excites me <laughs> because it means that we have hope to look forward to. And we have hope even today. Mm. Thank goodness. Thank goodness for hope. We yes. have hope today, not tomorrow, not the next day. We don't have to wait for it. It's here. It's now. It's available to mm. us. Thank you, God. We're going to talk about some benefits of having the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Right. So, Paula, what is one of those benefits? Well, one of the coolest ones is the comforter because Jesus says, I have to leave y'all. I know you're sad and upset that I died and I've been resurrected and you're thrilled to have me back in here, but right. I'm going to go back to my father and, but don't worry, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to be your comforter mm -hmm. and just wait here. Don't do anything. Don't go anywhere. Just wait here till I send the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And they were sitting around with nothing to do because it was important that they have that. So they actually stayed in a room in a specific place on hold until uh -huh. the right. Holy Spirit came, right? right? Yes. But that comfort that they had in that time frame, the ability to deal with their grief, their loss, and all of that is something that we also get to have in our yes. own personal journeys. Yes. Well, they got to experience the grief, the loss for a while before the Holy Spirit actually came. I mean, mm -hmm, they did. Right. They had to wait without it so they could experience the before and after and be very aware of the before and after. Um, and they were, I mean, it says they were filled. So they were filled to the brim. Mm -hmm. And sometimes though, you know, you know, what's really interesting is that in, in scripture, it does say that, that the spirit came upon them bef mm -hmm. you know, before we were given the Holy Spirit. The spirit could come upon individuals, um, but it doesn't necessarily say that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. It, it did come upon them. So um, that, that comfort that they were receiving was just to the full, to the max at that point. And I think it's important to, for us to understand that we can have the Holy Spirit without be, being completely filled with the Holy Spirit. But once we do have that, it is like overflowing <laughs> and it's pretty amazing. Well, another benefit that I have found in the Holy Spirit is this, the power. And in Acts 1-8, mm -hmm. it talks about, um, he says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Mm -hmm. What? Power? And that is not like reigning power where I get to control everybody around <laughs> me. <laughs> but power... In, in, in the sense that it empowers me to do the things that God has called me to do. That's mm -hmm. huge, especially mm -hmm. in this field of helping women and men in their brokenness. Right, yes. because in our brokenness, we've got no power. No. <laughs> we have like literally mm -hmm. broken little boys and girls. Power is not one of those mm -hmm. things that, that we feel like we have. We don't feel like we have an internal strength. We feel weak, but God says in our weakness, he's made strong. Well, the he that helps give that strength and mm -hmm. that power is the Holy Spirit yeah. and not the theological, let's discuss when, how, and why, and was that for back then, or was it, is it here for today, or do you have to handle right. snakes or drink poison to have it, or I don't know, there's some I really, really confusing, <laughs> there's some confusing stuff out there yes. about this, this topic, yes, and we're not sure. getting into the messiness of that. Right. We are wanting to discuss the fact that we have experience. We have personal life-giving experience with the Holy Spirit, filling and changing our lives, mm -hmm. giving us that comfort when we're in that place of brokenness, that mm -hmm. place of isolation, that place 
of, of pain and darkness and aloneness and, and understanding the Holy Spirit as that right. comforter. Right, even that's, in the midst of that chaos. It, that's that's inside. around us. Right. right, or even inside, yeah, exactly. Inside. <laughs> yes, that's true. When everything <laughs> outside is, is insane, right. to have that peace that passes understanding mm-hmm. that, that is coming to me through that comfort, through the Holy Spirit is huge. And then to have power to change, mm-hmm. to heal, mm-hmm. to um, get out there and, and make a difference. That's such uh, a, an entirely different thing than the broken little girl that needed to run and hide in a panic mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. While you were an adult. Oh yeah, I was the adult <laughs> being triggered to the broken little girl right. and having no power, no strength to even be myself and, and do basic functional mm-hmm. things. But with the Holy Spirit and His power, that shifts and changes. And, and I have healing and capacity and growth and life, like yes. vibrantly alive, <laughs> yes. that comes through that, which I could never do in my own strength. Right, right. Yeah, I'd be, you know, at home alone, maybe <laughs> chomping on some popcorn, not thinking I could do anything ever. <laughs> right. And just kind of wanting to shut the world out. Mm-hmm. But instead, with the power, I can stand up and say, okay, I'm going to do something with this. I, I feel like I can do something. And sometimes that just brings a little bit more boldness, boldness. <laughs> to our life, right? Vanna, how, how has the Holy Spirit made you more bold in your life? Well, <laughs> lots of different ways. One would be, um, the one that just keeps coming to mind right now is the boldness to leave the comfort of a job Mm. A steady paycheck, great (laughs) income, great benefits, but stepping out um, into some really unknown territory and a ministry that God had called me to, but I would not have been able to do it had he not, one, comforted me through the grieving process of leaving Mm. all of that, giving me the power to stand up to my boss and say, hey, I'm leaving, (laughs) and then the boldness to follow through, Mm -hmm. because I could have just quit the job and not follow through, you know, there's lots of different things that could have happened, but God was like, nope, I'm calling you to this. I never would have ever imagined that I was going to be in full-time ministry. Who knew? (laughs) Definitely didn't think I'd be behind all these cameras either. (laughs) No, you're in front of them. Oh, yes, I am in front of them. (laughs) But you can because you're bold. Right. You are emboldened by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. What about you, Paula? Well, for me, the the power of the Holy Spirit has given me the boldness to pray healing over somebody and with mm-hmm. His power, because He's doing it, watch them be healed. Yeah. Wow. Miraculously healed. In fact, the first time I experienced that level of the Holy Spirit, I was like four years old. Wow. Did you know that a four-year-old... Had no idea. No, four-year-olds can't do that, especially not really broken, oh, traumatized four-year-old, except... <laughs> Apparently they can. <laughs> except with with the power of yeah. the Holy Spirit, yeah. with the boldness and the childlike faith that comes mm-hmm. with that. And watching that same thing happen as an adult when you're in a, a place where you're going back to and dealing with trauma triggers and complex mm-hmm. trauma and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And instead, the Holy Spirit is like, by the way, I'm here. So I can hold and comfort you through that. I can speak and work through those around you. I can give you that power to change and to grow and heal. Oh, and by the way, let me give you the boldness to stand up to a perpetrator publicly. Let me give you the boldness to be a single mom and launch a ministry when you've got nothing to work with. Like, (laughs) I can't do that. There was no way I could do that. But with the power and boldness of the Holy Spirit, then it's like, you know what? What do I have to lose? Right. Right. He either does it and he does it through me and he empowers me and provides and put these pieces together and brought you amazing, beautiful women (laughs) into this journey to be able to do the thing that I couldn't do. Mm -hmm. But he can do it and he can empower and give us the boldness to do that. And it changes. It just changes everything. Well, and along the way, he gives us the direction, which is another benefit. Mm-hmm. of the that fullness of the Holy Spirit is that He guides us and directs us. It's like a GPS, although we never have to turn Him off. Like He's always He's always <laughs> turned on. We, don't, we just have to say, hey, hey, God, where are we going today? You know, here I am. Send me. Um, little did I know that that one prayer I, I'm a, I, <laughs> landed me in full-time ministry. Uh, this broken little girl who ha- was raped at a really young age um, by someone really close to our family and then the continued sexual abuse, 
how in the world was God ever going to use that? Mm. And here he is today using it and has given me a voice and put all these letters behind my name, which to me mean not a lot, but it's, it's part of that calling that he mm -hmm. gave me the education and each step of the way has directed. Well, and you're wearing an ex-victim shirt. <laughs> I am. Like, yeah. I am today. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when we met, you told me you would never ever be able to wear that because you yeah. couldn't associate yourself publicly mm -hmm. with the victim side of your story. Right. Except that it was a part of your story. Mm. And to watch again, the Holy Spirit <laughs> come in and make it where you are, are bold and out there and, and owning the past and showing you're not there anymore and testifying to, to God's faithfulness and His healing through that. It's just, right. wow. Right. And the Holy Spirit really needed to give me direction in order to continue to walk in the path of ministry itself. And even at the event where, where we first met you, Ivana, <laughs> um, I, I handed Paula a check to have a table at that event, which was more than I was willing to give at that point. But the Holy Spirit was very definite that I needed to do it. And I, I remember telling her, I have no idea why I'm giving this to you. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but God did. Holy Spirit knew and he directed me in the right path so that I would be at the right place at the right time to plant the seed throw books. and throw a book oh. at you uh, <laughs> gently. <laughs> Here, why don't you take this? You might enjoy this. Uh, yeah, and go ahead. And, and it has brought us to an incredible place where none of us really ever expected to be. But that's the beauty of God and the Holy Spirit right. is that he knows where we're going and we don't have to. We don't have to know every single step down the line. We just have to know the next step and be obedient to the next step, to his directions. Right, and it changes you from the place the disciples were at where, you know, Peter betrayed Jesus three times. Right. And then he gets filled with the Holy Spirit and is standing in the temple testifying and, and preaching yeah. to thousands of people and standing <laughs> right. up for Christ knowing he could get tortured and killed and all this stuff for doing it. And just a few days later. Yeah. It's, it's this time frame. <laughs> and the catalyst, the change right. was the Holy Spirit coming yes. down in, in power and boldness and giving the words to speak. And in fact, in us being able to do this, we're having to sit here and go, okay, God, what do you want said? Right. Because... Paula, me, I don't have the words. I don't have the knowledge or understanding in my own strength, in my own self, but I can be a vessel. I can let the Holy Spirit work and speak and, and shine wisdom. through. And give me the, the wisdom and the direction and what our next steps are. And here, here we all are going, okay, God, I'm a vessel. You can use it. And the Holy Spirit is what comes in and fills that to overflowing with life and truth and healing, mm -hmm. uh -huh. that healing, yeah. huge, the way the Holy Spirit brings in that healing into our lives and directs us on the path to keep going on that journey for healing that we're talking about. Well, and I think, Paula, your, your story about the broken vessel of honor. Yes. Mm -hmm. And can you just sh share this with everyone? Because I think that that is just, it's so powerful about how the Holy yeah. Spirit pours in and weeks so we can pour out. So what is, that, what is this broken vessel of honor? Well, the broken vessel of honor was a time when I felt that the way I was, that, that I was made was defective. Mm -hmm. So like a, a small child had taken clay and just rolled it up and wrapped it around and made this little clay lopsided holes and, and messed up thing. And then had through the abuse and brokenness, I felt like it had just been thrown down and shattered on the ground. And the same child had just picked it up and tried to glue it back together. And it was that useless and that ugly and that hopeless. And I'm like, God, you're never going to be able to use me as a vessel. Like, I, I'm a mess. There's no way you can use me. And I just had this mental picture come into mind of that image of the, the vessel broken like that in a corner, covered it dirt and rejected, abandoned. Nobody wanted it. And then these gold hands came down and just scooped it up and held it and held it really tight and close. And I was like, oh my goodness, those hands are beautiful. And I don't see the broken, misshapen vessel anymore. Mm -hmm. And then this gold liquid poured into the vessel that the hands were holding. And I'm like, oh, wow, it's not leaking anywhere. Like the hands were making it sealed and, and holding and able to be used for something, right? And there's still that broken vessel in there. And then the hands started pouring and that golden liquid representing just life was pouring out wherever the hands let it. Right. 
and I'm going, oh, wait a second. It's not about me. It's not right. about the vessel. It's not about the brokenness. It's not about the misshapen aspect of it. But when the Holy Spirit comes in, when, when I was just willing to be lifted up and held, mm -hmm. then that came in and that power and that life and that beauty was able to pour through and pour out of. And it wasn't, I get animated talking about this. It wasn't... <laughs> about me anymore, right. especially when it was about me, when God wanted to use me that way, it wasn't about me. Right. It was just about letting him do that and him fill and him pour out of it. And I've watched him do that exact same thing with each of you in, in our daily lives in this calling to ministry. And it's so miraculous and beautiful. When I think that it's so powerful because there's many of you that are watching that you've probably had a pretty nasty, messy past. And we're, we're sitting here and we're sharing and we're airing our all of our <laughs> stuff out there for you. But it's really easy sometimes to sit there and go, that's great for them, but my story is different and there's no way God would ever use me. Because mm -hmm. I've sat in Bible studies and watched cr teaching curriculums and, and had that feeling of, that's great, Beth Moore. <laughs> You've come a long way. Or that's great, Christine Kank. You know, whoever it is at the time. But then go, but God, how you'll never use me. Mm -hmm. And so that, that broken vessel of honor, it's just crazy because when we met, I had a vessel of honor <laughs> on my mirror um, that a mentor had put up there because she was like, you want to hear a vessel of honor. And so I was like, oh, my gosh. He told you the same thing. Uh -huh. Yeah, he does that. <laughs> and I'm sure he's told you the same thing. Like, here we are. We're all vessels of honor. And yeah. it doesn't matter what our brokenness is, mm -hmm. that when the Holy Spirit comes in and fills whatever it looks like, that, that that's the place where he just gets to shine. And it's not about us. Mm -mm. Nope, definitely not. Well, and that gets us to the fact that there's there's more whether you feel like you um, got the Holy Spirit with salvation, whether you believe that, that it came a different way, if you believe that it wasn't possible in today's day and age, um, it is so cool because any of us can just ask and see, right? Mm -hmm. So if the Holy Spirit doesn't come around today anymore, then you ask Him to come and fill your life. And if He's not available, He just doesn't. What do you lose? Right? right, but I know from personal he's experience available. that yeah. he's available <laughs> and he will. So we can actually put that out there and say, Holy Spirit, I want you. I want more of you. I want full filling of you. I don't have to settle for a little piece. Mm -hmm. I, I can ask for more. And Ivana, you had a great example <laughs> about how you learned that aspect of it. Yeah. for I had a, um, a teacher explain it to us that, you know, we, when we accept Christ and we surrender ourselves over to God and say, okay, God, we're gonna, I'm going to follow you, the Holy Spirit comes in. We mm -hmm. invite him in. Come on in. But it's like having a mansion, and, and it, you know, it's just given to you. But if you only keep him in one room and you only lock yourself up in that one room of your house, you're not experiencing the fullness of it. Mm -hmm. And we can do that, but God says, but there's so much more. And right. there's these gifts of the Holy Spirit that I want to pour out, but you have to be willing to surrender. You have to be willing to listen. You have to be willing to obey that. Mm -hmm. So we all have a house. We have this mansion he's given us, and he's in one room. As soon as we say, yes, Jesus, yes, God, here I am, come in. But are you willing, oh, willing, uh -huh. <laughs> to uh -huh. let him come in and fill you up overflowing? Right. Instead of just keeping him there in the foyer, right. in the waiting area, it's, would you like to come into my dining room? Yes. And here's my kitchen, and here's my bedroom, and here's my closet, and with all of the skeletons in it. Yeah. And oh, and here's my wallet. Right. Yeah, <laughs> hey! That's a big one. <laughs> and everything else, I want, I want you to be in every piece yes. of my life, every area of my life, and give me that direction and that wisdom and that comfort in every area and all we need to do is invite him in and ask right. him to come in and as you were saying that surrender that willingness mm -hmm. to listen and then he really is able to move in when we obey as right. well and then we can move on to the next room of the house and the next one and we don't have to get caught up in the religion of it i know yeah. that in some denominations and churches that 
you know, they talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that can get really freaky for people and laying on a hands. But it, but it doesn't have to be all that. It's just simply saying, God, here I am. Holy Spirit, come in, fill all of it, fill every part of me, because there's some pretty great gifts, aren't there, Paula? There's amazing gifts, and there's the fruit of the Spirit that is always enhanced and grows when you have the Holy Spirit working in your life. Yes. But there's also gifts of the Spirit, and one of the cool things to me was if I didn't feel like I had the capacity to be strong enough to ask mm -hmm. for more on my own in a place of brokenness or whatever, that we can actually ask somebody else who is moving in these um, gifts of the Holy Spirit to pray with us, mm -hmm. to lay hands on us and, and ask for us to, to receive yes. that. Mm -hmm. Like we get to ask, but the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. He doesn't come push his way through. He doesn't right. force himself on you. Yeah. He doesn't make you have him mm -hmm. right. that way. We get to ask and invite and be open. And like you said, surrender mm -hmm. to him. And when we're doing that, then we have the ability, like it says in First Corinthians 12, 8 through 10, for one is given by the Spirit a word of wisdom. So you know something that He's given you that you wouldn't know in your own human mm -hmm. understanding, mm -hmm. or to another, a word of knowledge. So again, wait a second, supernatural, not just mm -hmm. the, oh, I learned that somewhere, or right. oh, that's a known thing, right. but where He can come in and, and speak things to you that you would not know otherwise. What are some of the other actual gifts that that he talks about faith mm -hmm. is definitely um oh my goodness uh, uh one of the one of the gifts um but healing you were talking about healing earlier mm -hmm. absolutely it's one of them um miracles what that's, what isn't that for like just the disciples right that was way back then wasn't it? <laughs> like eh, i'm not a oh wait wasn't there a scripture about how we are able to do even more than than jesus mm -hmm. as disciples because yes we're still disciples right mm -hmm. yeah because of the holy spirit mm -hmm. right and that's what he tells us is yes. that that gives us power and authority and the ability to do everything from i mean what jesus said was casting out demons and healing the sick yeah. and and even raising the dead at that point and we're like wait a second we're in america we don't do all that stuff but you know what having grown up in the jungles having grown up where th there's a whole different desperation yeah. in needing him to come in you watch somebody get bitten by a snake he should be dead in two minutes and you pray over him and that power of the holy spirit comes in and instead of the poison spreading through and killing him you see that swelling and redness and the damage shrink and actually go away and half an hour later he's continuing to work <laughs> like That's, talk about miracles yeah. talk about the power of the holy That's spirit incredible. talk about stopping death in its tracks mm -hmm. that is miraculous and the power of the holy spirit has the ability to do that today not just 2000 yeah. years right. ago absolutely <laughs> So that makes me really, really happy because there's other aspects of it in prophecy, in discerning spirits, in um, different kinds of languages and tongues and the interpretation of those languages and tongues. And rather than get caught up in all of this religious terminology and well, I agree, don't agree, or I think everyone has to, or no one should, or whatever the um, religious, I don't know, confusion that yeah. we get caught up in the semantics of all of that yeah right why not just say um god i want the most of you right, right. and if you have yeah. a, an option a holy spirit that can come in and that can be the most and it can fill me and it can give and heal and restore and and all the beauty and amazing things that that includes we have the opportunity to just say okay god here it's up to you yeah, I'm right. willing. I'm a vessel. I'm going to let you pick me up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then whatever you want to pour into me, whatever you want to pour through me, whatever you want to do in me, I, I'm willing. I'll, I'll listen and then I'll take action and obey. And that's what's so amazing about this is it's not complicated or ugly or hard. It's just, okay, here, here I am. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, Matthew 7, 7 through 8, you know, it, that's that scripture that says knock and keep on knocking. So, so it might not be an immediate thing where you just, okay, God, here I am, and I want you to come in and fill every part of me. I mean, I don't know that I felt like, woohoo, here we go. I got <laughs> Jesus. I got the Holy Spirit. Let's go. Not on day uh, one? No. <laughs> I had to knock and keep on knocking and keep being persistent and persevere through that, and, and God 
and, and in his timing and his perfect will mm. and in a very orderly way that's when it came upon me that's when he came in and said all right here i am mm. filling every room <laughs> opening up every bit of it to him mm -hmm. and so don't be discouraged if this is something maybe you've been asking for for years you just keep knocking and keep palms up surrendering to him because it's a gift and he's just waiting for you to receive it. And that's amazing is that we don't have to put boxes, labels, right. force anything. It's not about performance. It's not about achieving a specific thing. It's not about going, okay, I'm going to choose that I'm going to be the one that works in miracles or I'm going to be the one <laughs> that prophesies certain things. Right. It's right. no, it's just that, that willingness to be open and to be persistent in our openness, in our willingness, in our desire to be closer to him in our desire to want the gifts he wants to give us. And we'll have the fruits of the spirit no matter what. Right. Right. The gifts of the spirit, it says that he gets to give to one, to another. Mm -hmm. And you're not, oh, I don't have the Holy Spirit because I don't speak in tongues right now. Or I don't have the Holy Spirit because I haven't healed anybody or I haven't done these things. It's not about comparison. It's not right. about performance. It's not about any of these things. Right. It is about being willing. And in my case, God has actually worked through me at different places in my life in every single one of these. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I operate in all of them all the time. In fact, it's with me been very situation specific. Mm -hmm. When the need was there mm -hmm. and I was willing, then the Holy Spirit was able to work through me in that space and time for a specific purpose. And I might never repeat that. Right. Mm -hmm. But in that place where it was necessary and it was needed for somebody's healing or growth or wellness or safety mm -hmm. or whatever it was, when I was a yielded vessel, he was able to work through that. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's all, it, it's all up to him. Mm -hmm. And thanks y'all for joining us this week. And we look forward to talking to you again next week and taking that next baby step towards healing.